All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our school board meeting. Uh, before we get into the actual school board meeting, we, we I guess we need to do the pledge. All right. Could you stand and let's do the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now first we're going to have a special meeting. It's something required uh, by the statute that uh, we have the Board of Finance uh, to review some of the finan financial matters of the school corporation. And so, Mr. Sarkeesian, you're going to kind of lead this part of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as you well know, the requirements under the state of Indiana require that uh, there are certain nominations for the Board of Finance. And as a result, uh, I will be asking the board first and foremost uh, for a nomination of officers for the school board of finance. We will begin with the office of president. Is there a uh, nomination for the office of president? I nominate Carl Sender for the office of president of the Is board. Is there a second? I second. Are there any further nominations? Seeing that there are no nominations, or is there a motion to close the nominations? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor of closing the nominations? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing that we have a nomination for Carl Sender as president of the School Board of Finance, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing no opposition, uh, Mr. Sender, congratulations. You are the president of the School Board of Finance. All right. <laughs> Don't okay. need to clap. <laughs> All right. There you. Moving on to the office of vice president. Is there a motion for uh, vice president of the school board of finance? Yes, I like to motion. I make a motion and recommendation uh, nomination for Jeff Bogner. Is there a second? Second. Any further nominations? Seeing that there are no further nominations for vice president, is there a motion to close the nominations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of closing the uh, vice president nomination signify by saying aye. 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 Seeing that uh, that has been done, all those in favor of Jennifer Bogner as vice president of the school board of finance, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing no opposition, uh, congratulations, Ms. Bogner, as vice president. Moving on to the position of secretary. Is there a motion for secretary of the school board of finance? I'd like to make a motion to nominate Kurt Minko as secretary of the board of finance. Is there a second? Second. Are there further nominations? Seeing that there are no further nominations for the office of uh, secretary, all those in favor of closing the nominations, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing that that being done, those nominations are closed. We have a nomination for Kurt Minko as secretary. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Seeing no opposition, congratulations, Mr. Minko. You are the secretary. Moving along to treasurer. A treasurer must be uh, selected. Is there a motion to select a treasurer for the School Board of Finance? Yes, I move um, to nominate Sharon Quackenbush. Seeing that there is a motion for that, is there a second? Second. All those in favor, uh, or are there any further nominations? Seeing no further nominations, all those in favor of closing those nominations, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing no opposition, we have the motion before us of Ms. Quackenbush being treasurer. All those in favor of Ms. Quackenbush being treasurer, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No opposition. Congratulations, Ms. Quackenbush. You are the treasurer. I will now turn the meeting back to uh, Mr. Sender for further deliverance on issues. I will be back up shortly to ask additional questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sarkeesian. Um, at this point, uh, I believe uh, Mrs. Quackenbush has an investment report to review with us. I'll turn it back over or turn it over to her. Thank you. At the Board of Finance meeting, we're required to review the district's investment policy, designate the depositories for district funds for the current year, 
and to present a report for the investment earnings during the prior year. Investment policy 6020, investment income, was submitted to the board through board docs. The policy was last updated in October of 2019 and reviewed by the board in January 2021. I do not have any recommendations for changes at this time unless the board has any recommendations. We are also asking the board to designate Horizon Bank and First Source Bank as our depositories for the coming year. As far as our investment report, we have in our operating funds, which includes the education fund, in our accounts payable bank, we earned interest of $58,915.79. In the payroll bank, we earned interest of $873.87. For the self-insurance fund health in the bank, interest of $551.83. In the trust account, $8,921.13. For the self-insurance fund dental, interest of $264.38. In the pension fund trust interest, $12,700.57. In the food service fund, interest of $1,000. $62.25 for a total investment earnings of $83,289.82. If there are no questions, we would ask for approval of the investment reports. All right, thank you. Do you have any questions for Mrs. Quackenbush on the investment report? Mrs. Quackenbush, I presume that the interest earnings is either comparable or a little bit less uh, than last year? It's actually substantially less than last year. We had earned in 2020 over $400,000, so it, it's much reduced. And part of that is probably because of some of the referendum money and also probably lower interest rates It's as lower well. interest yep. rates is really what the yep. issue is. I think we all recognize that rates are quite a bit lower. Yes, hmm. yes. Okay. All right, um, not seeing or hearing any other questions. Uh, what's the board's pleasure on approving the investment report and also approving Horizon Bank and First Source Bank as our depository banks? A motion to approve the 2021 investment report and Horizon. And also First Source. And First Source. Yep. First Source. I second. We have a motion and a second to approve the investment report and also to uh, designate uh, Horizon Bank and First Source Bank as our primary depository banks. Any further discussion? Not hearing any. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Motion's been approved. All right, Mr. Sarkeesian, uh, we have another report to consider. I, I do, uh, Mr. President. Uh, as you well know, Indiana law requires... Uh, by statute, uh, additional confirmation is done here uh, to confirm that the board members each received the financial condition report and also had a chance to review said report. So I will ask you each individually if that is the case. Mr. Sender, have you had that opportunity? I have. And you have reviewed it? I have. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Bogner, have you had that opportunity? Yes. And have you reviewed that? Yes. Mr. Menko, have you had that opportunity? Yes. And have you reviewed that? Yes. Thank you. Dr. Barron, have you had that opportunity? You'll have to answer audibly, sir. Yes. And uh, you've reviewed that? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Watkins, have you had that opportunity? Yes. And you've reviewed that? Yes. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. President. All right, do we need to take any further action on this item? I do not believe so, sir. Okay. Great, thank you. All right, I believe um, we also have, that concludes the business of the Board of Finance. We do have an opportunity for public comment for any item concerning the Board of Finance. So is there anyone at this time? Did anyone, no one signed. No one signed, all right. Anyone wish to speak up on the Board of Finance? All right, not seeing or hearing anyone. Um, is there a motion to adjourn the Board of Finance meeting? So moved. We have a motion. Second. 
Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. The Board of Finance meeting is now adjourned. And uh, since we've already said the Pledge of Allegiance, um, I guess we will now call the regular meeting to order. Unless, does anyone, I don't think we need to say it again, do we? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Looks like first item on the agenda tonight is approval of the consent agenda. Uh, has the board members all had an opportunity to review the consent agenda? Yes. If so, what is your pleasure? I motion that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's approved. Okay, next we have financial reports, our typical performance of budget reports, Mrs. Quackenbush. Thank you. Each month we present the financial reports and calculate a ratio comparing the beginning fund balance for the year to the ending cash balance for the prior month. If the ratio equals one, the performance of the fund is good. If the ratio is greater than one, the performance is excellent. And if the ratio is less than one, we explain the cause. In December, we had the education fund ended the year at 1.18, up from 1.09. Debt service was at 1.01, up from 0.30, and that was due to the receipt of property taxes. The pension fund was 1.25, up from 0.84, also due to property tax receipts. Operations was 0.97, due to property taxes, up from 0.64. The operating referendum was 1.21, up from 0.53, due to property taxes. The capital referendum was 1.08, which was actually down from 1.46. We received property taxes, but we also paid the debt payment. And rainy day finished the year at 1.0. In the education fund, we expended 97.73% of the budget which was 2.27% under budget. The operations fund, we expended 86.45, which was 13.55% under budget. We believe that the financial reports show a positive financial condition, and we would ask approval of the reports. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Quackenbush. Um, I'm looking at the performance of funds. They're all above one, so that's a, a great financial indicator. Of for how we ended the, the, the calendar year. Any questions for Mrs. Quackenbush? Not hearing any, what's the pleasure of the board? A motion to accept the financial reports. I second. We have a motion and a second to accept the financial reports. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, motion's been approved, thank you. Next, we have contract considerations, Dr. McCall. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have before you a couple of contracts uh, and uh, MOUs. Uh, Valparaiso High School entering into a contract with Entertainment Express to provide disc jockey services for the winter dance uh, to be held February 12th. And then district-wide, we have uh, MOUs and agreements with various businesses uh, and partners located near our schools for evacuation locations. Uh, these are uh, annual agreements that we enter into as part of our safety plan. Great. Well, we're most grateful that uh, we have our business community willing to assist in an event that we'd ever have to have an evacuation. So, any questions for Dr. McCall on these contracts and MOU? All right, not hearing any, what's the pleasure of the board? I motion for approval. I second. We have a motion and a second for approving these contracts and MOU. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's been approved. All right, next we have grants. Uh, Mrs. Molasco. Good evening, board. We have several grants for your consideration this evening, the first one being Title III. The Title III grant is a federally funded grant that we use to serve our English learners. 
It has a total allocation of $16,472, and we will use these funds for professional development, family engagement, and to support staff salary. You will see FEMA also listed as a consideration this evening. Uh, FEMA assistance for COVID has a total allocation of $118,141.58. VCS applied for relief assistance in April of 2020 when FEMA opened disaster relief related to COVID to schools. We were just notified shortly before the holiday break this year that we received the previously stated amount. The application and award were granted for projects that have been closed through previous fiscal cycles. So we are working with FEMA to amend the projects and plan to use the money for supplies related to sanitation and mitigation when that process is complete, which was its intended purpose from the beginning. We also have two Project Lead the Way grants for your consideration, one in the amount of $4,800 and one in the amount of $2,400. Both will be used for training and supplies for teachers, one in the area of computer science and the other in the area of engineering. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Otherwise, I ask for your approval of these grants. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Mrs. Nolasco? Right, not hearing any. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? A motion to approve the grants. I second. We have a motion and a second to approve the four mentioned grants. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have donations and gifts. Uh, Dr. McCall and also Dr. Hawkins. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we will be bifurcating the donations and gifts uh, as is uh, annually. We have holiday assistance program as well as backpacks and snacks. I'd like to give Dr. Hawkins an opportunity to outline those special programs as well as identify all the individual donors. So I'll just take the uh, extracurricular donations and corporation donations and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Hawkins. For the uh, extracurricular donations at Valparaiso High School, Jeffrey Templin. Uh, donated $5,179 to pay a portion of the softball batting tunnel. Uh, Castle Subaru donated $5,000 to offset costs of overnights, warm-up pants, potential new uniforms for girls cross country and girls track and field. Presbyterian Resale Shop donated $300 for meals after golf matches for the boys golf. And Thorgren Tool, Tool and Molding donated $1,000 for hotels and meals for boys basketball. For food service, Mary Alice and Henry Kohler donated $500 to apply to overdue student lunch accounts. Central Elementary, Casey's General Store donated $26.20 for use of principal's discretion. Evelyn, Such and Son Carpentry LLC donated $300 for the choir t-shirts. TJ Elementary, Brian Williams donated $125 to support outdoor environmental learning and or art. Ben Franklin Middle School, Culver's number 154, donated $388.43 to the robotics team. At the Vail, Mr. and Mrs. Doug Holler, Porter County Community Foundation, donated $2,825 uh, for a washer dryer. And the Seaver family donated 17 designer prom dresses for needy students through the Vail program. District-wide, Michael and Bonnie Stevens donated $500 to the Viking Puppy Project. And the John Daly family donated two gently used bikes for students in need. Evelyn Elementary, Chesterfield Awning uh, Company Incorporated donated $1,385.65 in uh, base xylophones for Evelyn Elementary. That concludes my portion. Settle in for Dr. <laughs> Hawkins' portion. It is many pages long. Yes, yes but thank you. Um, Dr. McCall and board for the opportunity to highlight two of our social services programs and those donors that make those programs possible. The first is our Backpacks and Snacks program, and that is our weekend food program um, for family, kids in our community that express a need, families that express a need and are struggling with food insecurity over the weekends. So as a reminder, each two-day weekend, we send home two breakfasts, two lunches, two dinners, and some additional snacks. We send home extra food on extended weekends and long breaks as well. It's completely donor-funded, and we have approximately 260 students using that program regularly. 
Our holiday assistance program is the other one to highlight tonight. That program provides items for students at the parents' request to help brighten their holidays. Um, donors donate things that students may want, but also things that they could need. And it is also completely donor funded. We've uh, been able to serve over 600 students or children uh, through the holiday assistance program this year. I appreciate the time to read through each of those names and recognize each gift. An anonymous donation of $75. Dr. Julie Krumine, $100. Larry and Judith Allen, $20. Lewis and Ruth Foster, $10. Eric and Joy Watson, $25. Mary Lou Bishop, $10. Daniel and Catherine Taglia, $100. Michelle and Charles Foster, $10. Joanne Murphy and Amy Kreis, $10. Michelle and Christopher Brown, $20. VHS jazz bands and the NHS first hour classes, non-perishable food. Lon and Heather Sullivan, $150. Ishmael and Sarda, Sharda De Jesus, $300. Mr. and Mrs. Matt Whaling and the Be Like Keegan Fund, $250. Daniel Banstra, and Mary Hornsheimeyer Banstra, $300. Michael and Lilia Bodoin, $150. James Brown, $150. Maria and Michael Overlay, $300. Alexander and Nicole Mexner, $20. Matthew and Marlo Berg, $33. Jennifer Hora, $300. Val Ingram, and Ingram Valuation Services, $150. Calvary Church, $1,000. Brandon and Victoria Brockett, $150. Garner and Mary Tullis, $500. <coughs> Selimar and Gerald Jenica, $120. Mary Sprutenberg, $20. Michael and Deborah Miller, $300. Valparaiso Professional Firefighters Association Local 1124, $1,200. John and Joanne Brugos, $500. James Bizek and Tammy Pierce Bizek, $300. Kiwanis Children Charities, $100, Meyer, $100, $100 Meyer gift card. Joel Alderson, $25 Meyer gift card. Pioneer Products Incorporated, $100. Kiwanis Club of Valparaiso Service Fund, $250. Michael Delaman, $500. Don Quixote Restaurant, non-perishable food, and $670. The total backpacks and snacks gifts included 38 gifts, totaling $8,218. For holiday assistance, Alberta Kenworthy, $1,000. The Sutt family, $75. Lisa Rommelman, $80. Jennifer and Michelle Andrews, $875. Life Care Center of Valparaiso Therapy Department, $440. Thomas Jefferson Middle School Builders Club, $300. Kara German, $150. Kelly and Steve Martinez, $100. Jensen Burke, $100. Maria and Mike Overlay, $350. Jenny Pavlinak, $400. Gretchen and Eric Schultz, $135. Mara Fiegel Hicks, $310. VHS Key Club, $100. Erica Clendenin, Don Bondra, and Daisy Alberto Martinez, $100. Alan Valerie Thayer, $225. Denise Scott, $100. Joyce Einikis, $300. The Boxham family, $260. Daniela Hall, $200. Matt and Leslie Maxwell, $350. Barry and Crystal Fenters, $320. Tabitha and Joshua Etherton, $100. Darren Feller, $444. Michelle Keenan, $150. Tara and David Reynolds, $1,500.
Memorial kindergarten classes, $600. Memorial fourth grade classes, $600. Jesenia Gonzalez, $92. The Schoenfeld family, $300. Bonnie Lang, $200. The Moy family, $110. Valparaiso Firefighters Local, $1124, $1,000. Dana Funk, $175. Cassie Riley, $350. Carmen Gober, $60. Amanda, Matt, Maddie, and Foster Langle, $75. John and Antoinette Mario, $200. Laura Bryan, $350. Katie Green, $120. Megan Mahoney, $50. Mary Reeve $450. Stephanie Cooper, $50. Janelle and Richard Orlop, $300. Kathy Beimer, $170.42. St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, $1,250. Jamie Henry and Clint Henry, $300. Hani Lugo, $240. Chris Wendell, $200. Elizabeth Trocht and Eric Johnson, $280. Jennifer Patrick, $300. Sean and Casey Ensign, $60. The Seidel family and Diana and Bill Dolk, $400. Robert and Darlene Tomsick, $760. Sally Hewitt, $725 Interiors, $600. The George family, $117. VHS Cheer, $77. Michael and Peggy Hofer, $2,000. The Lalick family, $200. The Bean family, $225. Chris and Shelby Topping, $195. Pamela Ross, $160. Karen and Matthew Debris, $200. Delta Theta Tau, $770. Kendra Myhut and Lisa Burke, $200. Bonnie Lang, $400. Lisa Thomas, $70. Holly Grunwell, Stephanie Ashton, Kelly Peters, Megan Minter, Jennifer Manti, Norma Kaselka, ENA Jewelers, <clears throat> Jane Castle, Becca Gallion, $900. Matt and Lisa Schultz, $200. Cassandra Heeren, $200. Adam and Megan Moss, $135. The Heron family, $70. Sally and Lucas Eklund Baker, $200. Dion Price, $150. Bart and Elena Celeste Mosier, $235. Delta Theta Tau Alumni Tau Chapter, $600. $600. Lisa Hutton and Lisa Cusbel, $265. Abby Dvorak and David Roman, $60. Susan and Ian Foster, $200. Carolyn Beeson, $100. Christina Woods, $125. Amy and Arthur Wright, $235. Jennifer Trowbridge, $500. Rebecca Garibay, $200. Aaron, Laura, Poppy, and Gemma Ingram, $500. The Garrig family, $100. Barbara Punter, $250. Aaron Schmigel, $275. Danya Kolosuski, $200. Michael Major, $100. Lindy Johnson, $150. Jen Scafish, $250. Jeff and Kathy Wardell and Donna and Randy Kuehl, $1,667.05. The Reichard family, $280. Jackie Barker, $70. Gulab Vayus, a winter coat. Jessica Hallier, gloves, hat, neck warmer. Jenny Hallier, pants, shirt, sweatshirt, and anonymous amounts from Kim K, the Lavenda family, Susan Lamerton, Amanda and Steve Zelikowski, Melissa Kelly, Michelle Solomon, Joe Weil, Sally Case, the Langle family, St. Iacovos Church, Grace Hollinger. We also had 104 anonymous donors totaling $17,566. We had 214 gifts to the Holiday Assistance Program, 
and the amount totaled $48,506.47. We'd just like to extend our gratitude to all of these donors who make these really special programs possible for our kids. Let's so give, thank you. Give a round of applause to all these donors. This truly warms my heart to see the, the number and the amount of gifts given for our school and especially the kids, especially the backpack and the holiday assistance program. That really makes Valparaiso a very special place uh, that we have so many families Absolutely. and businesses and individuals who uh, contribute uh, so generously. So thank you. Um, this does require board action to accept these gifts. Uh, I don't think we'll have to deliberate too hard, huh? <laughs> uh, what's the pleasure of the board? I move that we accept all the donations and gifts. Who would turn it down? <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's approved. Well, that was fun. <laughs> all right. Um, <clears throat> Looks like that concludes the financial portion. Now we move on to old business. Um, board consideration fuel bid recommendation. Mrs. Quackenbush. Thank you. At the December board meeting, the board approved to advertise bids for the purchase of unleaded gasoline and diesel fuel. The notice to bidders was advertised in the Times and the Chesterton Tribune on December 28th and January 4th, with the bid opening on January 11th, 2022. We received three bid responses. Based on the tabulation of the bids, we are recommending that the bid be awarded to Co-Alliance as the lowest responsible and responsive bidder. Co-Alliance is also our current vendor. If there are no questions, we ask for approval to award the bid for no lead gasoline and diesel fuel to Co-Alliance for the period February 1 through December 31, 2022. Any questions from Mrs. Quackenbush on these bids? So, well, thank you for getting these bids and getting our fuel prices locked in. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? I motion that we approve the bids. I second it. We have a motion and a second to award the fuel bid to Co Alliance. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's been approved. Thank you. And I, you might as well continue on under new business uh, for approval of the 2022 travel payment and mileage reimbursement rates. Thank you. According to our board policy 6504, reimbursement rates for meals, lodging, and mileage are to be set by the corporation and approved by the board annually. We're therefore asking for approval of the following reimbursement rates. For mileage, we are asking approval of the IRS standard mileage reimbursement rate of 58.5 cents per mile for approved travel retroactive to January 1, 2022. This is an increase of 2.5 cents over the rate for 2021. For meals, we are asking approval to use the meal reimbursement rate according to the current fiscal year per diem rate from the U.S. General Services Administration or gsa.gov site, plus sales tax and tip, if applicable, limited to 20%. Meal limits may be combined per day based on the FTE of the travel day. For lodging, we're asking for board approval of the GSA recommended lodging reimbursement rate according to the current fiscal year per diem GSA rate, excluding taxes. Reimbursements exceeding the GSA guidelines require prior approval from the superintendent or designee. If there are no questions, we would ask for approval of these recommendations. All right. Any questions on these items for Mrs. Quackenbush? Not hearing any. Um, it does require board action to approve both the travel payment and the reimbursement rates. What's the pleasure of the board? A motion to approve the travel payment and reimbursement rates. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second to approve the travel payment and reimbursement rates for 2022. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's been approved. All right, Mrs. Quackenbush, it looks like we also have monthly transfer of funds from education fund to operations fund. 
Thank you. State tuition support revenue is required to be receded into the education fund. Since the creation of the education fund and the operation fund in 2019, expenses were separated into educational and operational type categories. Schools are allowed to, allowed to transfer a portion of the revenue from the education fund to the operation fund by resolution. Statute requires the school corporation make, and this is a quote, every reasonable effort to transfer not more than 15% of the total revenue deposited in the school corporation's education fund from the education fund to the school corporation's operation fund during a calendar year. We are asking for board approval of a resolution to transfer $528,000 each month from January to December of 2022 from the education fund to the operations fund. This is the same amount that was transferred in 2021. This transfer amount represented approximately 14% of the revenue for 2021. If there are no questions, we ask for approval of the resolution authorizing the transfers. All right, uh, I think you've heard the request tonight and that the amount is gonna be the same as it was in 21. Any other questions for Mrs. Quackenbush? Not hearing any, what's the pleasure of the board? I motion for approval to uh, for the monthly transfer of funds. I second. We have a motion and a second to approve the monthly transfer of funds from the education fund to the operations fund. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's been approved. Thank you. And looks like the last item is uh, year-end budget appropriation transfers. Mrs. Quackenbush. Thank you again. At the December board meeting, the board approved a resolution authorizing the treasurer to make necessary intra-fund appropriation transfers as a routine part of closing our accounting records for calendar year 2021. The required transfers were to be presented to the board for approval. Earlier this week, we provided copies of transfer of appropriation resolutions and certificates for the transfers through board docs. I'm therefore asking for formal board approval of the following year-end appropriation transfers. In the education fund, $2,187,747. In the operations fund, $1,049,082. And in the operating referendum fund, $163,246. If there are no questions, we ask for approval of the resolutions. This is really just a year-end housekeeping item, is exactly. that right? Exactly. It's no additional spending. It's just really just a routine process of closing the books. Okay. Any other questions for Mrs. Quackenbush? Not hearing or any others? Um, what's the pleasure of the board? I would make a motion that we approve the year-end budget appropriations. I second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the year-end budget appropriation transfers. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's been approved. All right. Thank you, board. It looks like we're moving right along. Uh, we now come to public comment. Uh, Mr. McCall, we have some people signed up. Dr. McCall, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yes, we do, Mr. President. We have five people signed up. Uh, the order is as follows. We have Addison Clark, Grace Almaraz, Brian Williams, Veronica Wilson, then Jessica Jepson. So Addison Clark, you're up first. Oh, and before, um, let me just, um, go we ahead, always, go yeah, you can come up. I just have a little reminder to everyone. Um, as a reminder to the patrons of the Valparaiso Community Schools, you'll be given three minutes to give board comments on educational issues. You're reminded that decorum is expected and discussions, charges, complaints involving personnel, litigation, or student discipline will not be permitted. We expect, expect you to address your comments to the board and not to the audience. Patrons in attendance are asked not to provide any comments or remarks during the speaker's address or afterwards, including any applause. <coughs> Excuse me. This is an opportunity for you to provide information to the board and not to enter into a debate or personal attacks. We are Valpo and expect comments to be done with that in mind. 
If you're not able to follow these guidelines, you'll be asked to leave the meeting. So thank you for coming and uh, we'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you so much, board. My name is Addison Clark. I'm a sophomore at VHS and I am autistic. I think it's important that I emphasize that here at the start, that I am autistic. It is a huge part of my life and my identity. At the last school board meeting, there were concerns raised about two books that were left unnamed. One of these books is The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. I was able to deduce very quickly from the statements at the meeting that this was not the book being discussed in depth. I have not been able to figure out what about this book was deemed, quote, inappropriate. This is a book about another autistic high schooler named Christopher John Francis Boone. His neighbor's dog is killed, and he is on a mission to find out who killed the dog. <clears throat> this book has representation of an autistic high schooler and hyperfixation, which was crucial for me as I learned about my diagnosis and what it meant for my life. Hyperfixation, for those who are unaware, is one of a few ways a neurodivergent, but most commonly autistic and ADHD, person controls their surroundings. It is a single, unchanging topic that they learn everything they can about. Many other topics are covered in the book, but I will be focusing on the autistic representation. The first time I read this book, I was in the fifth grade. It was before I was diagnosed with autism, but my parents bought me the book because they recognized me in Christopher. I realized that I saw myself in Christopher too, even before my diagnosis. It, I saw a representation of someone whose brain worked like mine. It helped me feel like I wasn't an anomaly. I was like other people. I cannot even begin to explain how validating this was, especially after I learned of my diagnosis. Seeing Christopher's brain work through scenes in the book felt like reading a page out of my life. I truly don't know if I would have accepted that I am autistic without this book. While the book rarely, if ever, outright states that Christopher is autistic, it is heavily implied. Author Mark Haddon has said in an interview that he doesn't want the book to label Christopher as autistic because he didn't want the character to become misrepresented as a typicality for autism. There is no typical for autism, as with any other disability. He also noted that Christopher's autism doesn't need to define him. There are a million and one other things that can do that. However, as someone who does make my disability a core piece of my life, I think it is important to recognize this in Christopher. It makes for such an important piece of his story throughout many sections of the book, and I will gladly give specific examples if you would like them. What I would like to say to all of you as members of the school board is if this book has done so much for me, what can it do for other kids? For the kids who force themselves into uncomfortability for the sake of normality and for the kids who have never seen the inside of a brain that has worked differently than theirs? The impact of this book on some students may be negligible, but the removal of it will leave a massive impact on me and other neurodivergent students. Our stories matter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Clark, or Ms. Clark, for coming up and sharing your thoughts. Uh, Ms. Almeras? Okay. Mr. Williams. <clears throat> Boy, that uh, litany, if that's the word, of the, the donations and the generosity, it's sort of taking some of the wind out of my sails, some of my, some of, some of my anger that I was going to express here, I guess. But that was just wonderful. and. It went on for so long. <laughs> I mean, and I agree, Doctor or Mr. Sender. This is a wonderful community to <laughs> to to do something like that. Um, my two comments: one hundred and three days until the May third referendum, and board, you still are playing coy about even announcing that the referendum is coming. You're listening to your advisor and the the strategy of stealth. Don't say anything until the last moment, uh, I guess under the thinking that, that um, the less people know until the last minute, if you hold until the last minute, that'll keep just the people who are already predisposed kindly towards the schools to, to vote and the other people not to know about it. That strategy, I mentioned this to Mr. Sender, <laughs> dump your advisor's advice and instead get out there, announce the referendum, announce why you're asking for it, what you're asking for, and then the, the support 
say, look at what these schools do. Look at what our teachers, our parents and students are doing every day. I mean, you don't, it's not a hard case to make. It's a fantastic case to make. This is not something you should be hiding until the last moment. Please, you know, if you're having the referendum May 3rd, which I've been telling people for a couple of years now, <laughs> Get it out there and then make the case and make it strongly. Um, the second item was, this year, the one millionth American will die of COVID-19. I hope it's not in Valparaiso. Um, I just wish you would, would follow the CDC advice, which you say you're following, to and require people, whether they're vaccinated or not, in an indoor setting to wear masks. <laughs> when, when the incidence level is at the highest level, which it is. Seconds. Millions of Americans have not done the very the very least they can do. The simplest thing to get vaccinated, wear a mask. What? I don't like this. This is, yeah, and I look stupid and fine. I don't care. I mean, you got to do your part. You all have to do your part by requiring that people follow the CDC recommendations indoors when <clears throat> the area is at the highest level of transmission level require that. Please. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wilson. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak once again at a school board meeting. It's very important to have parental input as a school board only exists because of parents. And our school board specifically is not elected, so we really need to make sure that in this circumstance, the decision making of the board is in line with the parental community in which it represents. I encourage all parents that care about their children's education to get involved and speak up. Recently, I've heard a lot of chatter about um, regarding Senate Bill 167. I think most of us can agree that school is not the place for political indoctrination. I reviewed the bill and I agree with what the bill stands for. Some schools and some school, school teachers do cross lines that are not acceptable. Teachers do work for the community that they serve in and their salaries are paid by taxpayers. Thus, the parents are stakeholders in the school corporation. As I contemplated the complete micromanagement of teachers in the future, if the Senate bill gets passed, I thought about how many teachers do not indoctrinate children or push their own individual politics onto their students. I thought about how many teachers I've loved through the years because of the impact they made on my children's lives. I don't know why we would punish all of the teachers because of a possible few. Then I realized the school board and the teachers and their unions should be the first to support this bill. For almost two years, we've put masks on healthy children. For two years, we've sent healthy children home for two weeks. So if it's good for the healthy students to be forced into masks and forced home to quarantine because maybe, possibly, there might be a sick child then it's fine for the teachers to be held, held accountable in the same way. So if you're a teacher that isn't trying to push sexuality onto third graders, so what? Someone might be, and we all have to suffer for it. Two years ago, we were all afraid. Now we have two years of data and knowledge. The numbers do not support masking the children. The scientific reporting does not support masking of children. To the teachers, this is the new world we live in. You will pay the price for the less than 1%. My son had to do it. I know that it sucks. First they came for the police officers and I did not speak out because I wasn't a police officer. Then they came for the children and I did not speak out because I wasn't a child. Then they came for parents and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a parent. 
Then they came for the teachers and there was no one left to speak for them. At the November meeting, I raised some questions as to the money the district was collecting to keep masks on children's faces. I believe I called it bribery. Dr. McCall, you followed up at the conclusion of the meeting that the district does not receive funds to mask our children. Essler 3 has given the school district over $4.4 million to keep our children in masks. Why should we, the taxpayers, approve any referendum that will increase our tax burden when you're receiving millions from federal funding to keep masks on our children? Mrs. Wilson, your time is up. Can you please wrap up your comments? I sure can. Thank you. In closing, what a complete shame that 245 years ago we fought for freedom against tyrannical governmental overreach. And that the people that we fought against had the tenacity to fight back against the same government that oppressed us not long ago. It is time for everyone to stand up and do what the UK did yesterday. It's time to end the mandates, end the masking, and even more, it's time to take our freedom back. It's okay to reverse course. All right. We all thank, make mistakes. Thank you for your time. Yes. Ask the CDC. Ms. Jepson. Good evening, guys. Um, are we still stating our addresses? Or am I just not paying attention? <laughs> 1259 Sherwood Drive. Uh, two things um, I wanted to ask, just based off the meeting and listening here today. One, definitely the referendum I asked last month. There's a lot of parents that want to be engaged in this process. When are you going to have a special meeting so we can learn about it? When are you going to lay out the reports so we can understand the finances and where our tax dollars are going? Um, very interesting. I, I didn't know FEMA, you guys were able to get FEMA funds um, and buy a bunch of sanitation supplies for COVID. Um, I've heard that you've pur purchased buses with all this COVID money that's coming in. So, you know, you guys are purchasing all these things and stuff, but what about the kids? The kids don't need things and stuff. They need people to pay attention to them. They need to be able to see people speak. They need programs that are going to help them recover from all this stuff. What programs are you putting in place because of COVID that are impacting directly the kids? We don't need things and stuff. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any other uh, speakers tonight? No other speakers. All right. Up. Okay. That concludes public comment. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> now ready for superintendent comments. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just review a couple of things. Uh, one, our COVID numbers that are uh, published on our dashboard. Uh, over the last two weeks, we've had 310 positive cases, uh, which have uh, resulted in uh, 159 uh, uh, additional quarantine students due to the mandatory requirement of contact tracing and quarantining. And of those 310 positive cases, it also produced uh, 576 other direct contacts who were exempt from quarantine because of our fully masked environment as outlined in the control measures under the statutory authority of the Indiana Department of Health to control communicable diseases of which COVID-19 is one. The, the uh, silver lining is that uh, between last week and this week, there was a 25% decrease in the number of positive cases going from 177 to 133. Sincerely hope that this trend continues and that we can uh, revisit our mitigation strategies uh, sooner rather than later. A couple of comments uh, were brought up during the uh, public comments session. Uh, in regard to the ESSER $3 or any of the federal dollars, the CARES Act, the uh, ESSER 2 or the ESSER 3 ARP dollars, none of that is contingent upon having a mask requirement in place. Uh, there is no contingency. It is not dependent on it. Those dollars are for uh, those emergency uses. And again, having a mask requirement is not a factor in receiving those dollars. A uh, question was also asked about using those federal dollars or even the FEMA dollars for um, things for students. Everything is in the service of students and to maintain our high quality in-person learning for our students and staff. 
uh, buses that were referenced were uh, mini buses. Again, um, transportation is often a barrier for our students, especially our students uh, in poverty. Uh, there is uh, before and after school tutoring, uh, which is part of the programs uh, and that the federal dollars pay for those tutors in those before and after school. And in order to help facilitate getting kids to and from school for those times and to bypass the shortage of uh, bus drivers, we purchased and expanded our mini bus fleet because uh, anyone with a traditional driver's license can drive those buses uh, with some training by our transportation department. By having those, we are able to overcome that barrier and have students participate in those tutoring activities before and after school. We also use the federal dollars to uh, increase our teaching staff and to decrease our ratios in our classes uh, K-12 wherever possible. We do that in order to adhere to our maximum of know to grow, that we want our teachers to be able to know our students <coughs> as much as possible in order to meet their needs where they are coming out of the 2021 school year. We've increased those staff to do that. It has made a difference for our kids. It is a team effort. Our social workers, our guidance counselors, our bus drivers, our custodians, our food service workers, our teachers, our paraprofessionals, the administrators, building level and district level, all of whom step in and sub because of a shortage of subs. We do it all in order to make sure that we can maintain our high quality in-person learning for our students. We are using those dollars wisely and in the service of our kids. We have a lot of pride in doing it the Valpo way. And that means putting kids first. And we will continue to do that legally and ethically. That concludes superintendent comments. Well, thank you, Dr. McCall, <clears throat> especially for clarifying um, what we're doing using uh, the federal funds and for helping with our kids and our school, especially during uh, these challenging times with COVID. Board comments. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to say. I just want to say one thing. Um, Dr. McCall emphasized that my kids enjoyed it. Many people in this room, whose kids are enjoying it. The student teacher ratio in Valparaiso Community Schools is really good compared to a lot of schools in Northwest Indiana. That's something that as a board that we've talked about behind the scenes quite a bit. We're really proud of that. I know Dr. McCall is really proud of that. I know our teachers are really proud of that. And as a parent, I'm really proud of that because if your kids grow up in a classroom with you know, 20 to 1 ratio versus 35 to 1, it makes a huge difference for your children. I think we can all agree on that in this room. So Dr. McCall, I think this board feels very strongly in support of, of those methods that you're using. Any other comments? All right. Well, that concludes um, our meeting tonight. Um, stay tuned for our meeting in February. So do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion's approved. Everyone have a good evening and be safe.